Hi, everyone. My name is Tracy Ostrom, and I am at UC Berkeley, uh, Department of Chemistry, and I'm here today to share with you a little bit about our journey uh, on microplastics. So a couple things I want to make sure I cover with you guys today is I uh, want to share with you basically what we've been doing the last couple of years in engaging students around the United States on microplastics in surface waters using the microplastics monitoring protocol. And I want to share also a little bit about what did we find? <laughs> what did we find uh, in our microplastics journey? And as a result of that, what did we do with the information and our lessons learned? Uh, and I want to end with uh, a little bit of uh, kind of an eye-opening experience um, that I had in Antarctica uh, last December on microplastics. So I'm going to share this with you today, and uh, hopefully uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, get in contact with me um, at your convenience. So let's start the microplastics journey with why, why bother, who cares? Um, so there's been a lot of talk. UC Berkeley is in the San Francisco Bay Area, and there have been a lot of news articles and talk about microplastics in our waters. And so um, when the opportunity came for us to learn about the microplastic monitoring protocol, um, we jumped on it. And our teachers were super interested that we work with to find out what's with this microplastics? What are they? Where are they? And so that really started our journey to learn more about microplastics in, in our neighborhoods. Um, we followed the microplastics journey from up in the Sierra Mountains, which is um, this range here uh, in California, and it goes all the way up through Washington. And we followed the trail of microplastics through um, <clears throat> major waterways, including the Delta and into the San Francisco Bay. Uh, and we want, we we're curious, what's, what are we going to find? And so the first thing we did is we conducted a pilot study, like how do we do this with students uh, in a way that's going to make sense with them. So we looked at um, piloting this program with three different grade levels, fifth grade, uh, eighth grade, and 10th grade levels. And we chose these levels in these schools because they fell along the watershed um, boundary areas that we were working in. So we started actually out with the eighth grade and they are at the bottom end of the watershed. They're right on the San Francisco Bay. And so you could say they're at the lower end of the watershed. And these were our first group. So we made lots of mistakes and um, we were very thoughtful about how we could approve this presentation to students um, to get keep them engaged throughout the MMP process. And uh, what we found is that it was challenging to fit it into a, a time capsule of about an hour, very challenging. And identification of the microplastics was just very time consuming and the kids didn't really finish, the students didn't finish doing their identifications. Uh, we then moved to the fifth grade level uh, after that. And with our lessons learned from the eighth grade, we found out ways we could engage students during that filtration period during the mic uh, microscope investigation uh, period. Uh, this was a rural school and um, they're more at the middle and lower end of the watershed. And um, they did a great job at finding micro, uh, microplastics in their microscopes. Um, but we decided not to engage in the identification piece because I think they were just a little too young to be able to have that patience to go through the identification. Uh, and then finally, in our pilot study, we tried um, uh, upper um, school limits, and that's 10th grade. There were 10th and 11th graders in the school, and this was a chemistry class. Um, and they were more in the upper or middle range of the watershed. It's an urban school. Um, identification was still challenging and time consuming for them, but they were able to key out um, some of the microplastics that they saw. Um, and really we found that it's important to make connections uh, to the content area that they were studying. 
So this pilot study actually led us to developing um, uh, ways in which we could work with students in the future in terms of identifying, looking for and identifying microplastics. Um, but I will say this, is that in all of the pilot studies, we did find microplastics. Doesn't matter where it was in, the micro, in our watershed, we had snow melt, we had river water, delta water, creek water, um, San Francisco Bay water, and across the board, we always found microplastics in our water samples. And one group even did um, an analysis of microplastics in tap water. Um, and sure enough, there were microplastics in tap water as well. So from this experience of working with these three different grade levels, we created a, a five-day pacing guide so that teachers had an opportunity to uh, integrate the content into their classroom. So it started out with a sink or float activity where different uh, plastics actually, some, some teachers did an inventory of how much plastic students were exposed to during the daytime at school and or at home. So they looked at whether or not these types of plastics uh, would sink or float, um, gave them some opportunities to educate their students on what microplastics are. And then we use the GLOBE program, Global Learning and Observation to benefit the environment. And looking at the analysis of the water quality where, where the samples were collected that we were gonna do microplastics analysis on. Uh, day four was the lab itself. And day five was the uh, storytelling. And storytelling means that students had an opportunity to express their, their learning journey of microplastics. So here you have some uh, photos from, and including a poster that was presented at the local student research symposium uh, on microplastics that a 10th grade student did. So with all this learning that we did and the pacing guides that, the pacing guide that we developed, we decided, well, we've got to get this out there. <laughs> we've got to start doing some training. Um, and educating our GLOBE community on the possibilities of integrating microplastics into their hydrosphere protocols. So we've trained uh, teachers from Michigan and Maine and obviously California where we're at, up in Northern California and Southern California. Uh, teachers in Ohio, New York, and even Alaska have come to our training uh, uh, to learn about the five-day pacing guide. And here's a picture of one of our trainings. And as you can see here, they're actually going through uh, the filtration process of a sample. So that brings me to, well, it's great. We've got lots of spread in the United States, but I had an opportunity to travel to Antarctica uh, in December, 2023. And I was very curious as to whether or not um, I could get a sample and uh, analyze the sample for microplastics. And uh, I had heard before, I had talked to the scientists um, in, uh, that have done research in, about microplastics in Antarctica. And they indeed confirmed that uh, their samples have found microplastics, but you know, I was curious whether or not, you know, I could find them. So uh, lo and behold, uh, we were on a National Geographic ship and we went um, pretty far south along the Antarctic Peninsula. And um, it was a wonderful experience where we had an opportunity to get into some kayaks one day. And I said, okay, this is it. Um, so we, we uh, got in our kayaks and I grabbed my sample bottles and I collected water samples from Margarita Bay. And this is what Margarita Bay looks like. As you can see, it's extremely remote. As a matter of fact, ships normally do not, uh, tourist ships normally do not come this far south in Antarctica along the peninsula. So we felt like it was a real treat. And I was curious whether or not we would find microplastics in this bay. Uh, this is the latitude and longitude of where we were at. So it just confirms how far south we were. <laughs> um, and then uh, we took the samples and uh, we were able to use the microscopes on the National Geographic ship we were on. And these were dissecting microscopes and uh, 
we looked for microplastics and uh, it didn't take us very long to find microplastics in our samples. So this is just one of many uh, examples of the microplastics we found in our samples. And it really goes to show um, that the spread of microplastics across uh, the globe is out there and we really need to move ourselves forward as a globe community and a scientific community to understand the extent and the spread of microplastics. So thank you for your time and please contact me if you have any questions.